Welcome to the Glencliff United Methodist Church Sermon Podcast, where we come together as a community to explore and deepen our faith. Our congregation is part of the Glencliff Commons, a ministry community in Nashville, Tennessee. We strive to create a space that is inclusive, compassionate, justice-seeking, and rooted in the love of Christ. We believe that faith is a journey, and we're honored to walk alongside each other, offering support and encouragement along the way. Our sermons are crafted with the intention of inspiring, challenging, and illuminating the timeless wisdom found in the sacred texts. Our sermon from July 7th, 2024, was delivered by Rev. Neely Hicks. Join us as we journey through an inspiring conversation about the miraculous power of faith, the importance of being vessels for God's love, and how humility brings us closer to the heart of God. Our scripture reading was from 2 Corinthians Chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. It says, I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I'm weak, then I am strong. So today, we've been singing about miracles, right? And are you in need of a miracle? Yes. I think we all are, right? I think we all are. And so I want to ask you, and this is not rhetorical, I want to hear your voices. What is a miracle? I think it's like something that gives you like relief or something. Something that gives you relief. Yeah. Something you didn't think would happen. Something you didn't think would happen. Or could happen. I'm not sure where that feedback's coming from. Dr. Nagel. So powerful, it takes your breath away. Unexplainable. Unexplainable. Anything else? A a gift from God. A gift from God. A gift from God. Okay, so now what miracles of Jesus stand out most to you? Water into wine, not the reverse. Water into <laughs> wine, yeah. Healing the sick. Healing the sick. Raising Lazarus. Raising Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. Bringing redemption to some who would, you wouldn't think could be redeemed. Yeah, bringing redemption to those who don't think that they can be redeemed. Yeah. Anything else? Saving the world. Saving the world. Reconciling all the world to God. Amen. So, third, final question for now. Has God ever performed a miracle in your life? Amen. Yes. Amen. Beautiful. Yes, still doing it. You know, just like the song is, He woke me up this morning and He's leading me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now. So today we are going to be talking about miracles. And before we begin talking and getting all up in our heads, let's go to God in prayer. So again, as Justina asked you earlier, just put your feet flat on the floor. Feel the ground beneath you. If you want to rest your palms up in your laps, take a deep breath in. Two, three, four, out, two, three, four, 
And just continue to slow and steady your breath as we pray. God, you who through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are blessing us right now. You woke us up. You got us here to this place, either on person or on Facebook. Now awaken us to your spirit. Awaken us. Guide us. Comfort us. Empower us to be your vessels. Help us to shine so that people see you through our words, actions, and love. In Christ's name, amen. So, so yeah, we, we know Jesus is the one who came to earth to reconcile us to God, to bridge this big gap between humanity and God that was existent there since the Garden of Eden. To show us in person, and this is the thing that really gets me, to show us in person what love actually is. Because sometimes we love imperfectly, right? We say, love ya, love ya, and it's like, oh, well, did we really mean that or not? Um, but hey, that's life. But Jesus, when we look at his example, we see what love really is. Amen? So throughout his life, he taught people with his words and his actions. He gave sight to the people who were blind. Sorry about that static. I don't know. Is your mic on that you have on? I don't have another mic on. Yeah, so I don't know where that's coming from. But sorry, y'all, because we don't have anyone running the board today. So, okay, I'm going to keep going. We'll take that static as God saying amen, okay? Let's do that. Okay, so throughout his life, Jesus showed us miracles. He gave sight to the blind. He made disabled people able to walk and stand again. He healed those who were bent over and bleeding and living with mental and spiritual illness. Amen? And yes, he raised Lazarus even from the dead. So why does God care so much about human beings? God who made the heavens and the earth, all creatures of the earth, and all the people of the earth, loves us. And get this, it's because God's own imprint is inside of us. Why would God not love something God made? Amen? Amen? And that stands for every person in here. So I'm going to give you an example. Do y'all, how many of y'all like to go to thrift stores? Mm -hmm. I love thrift stores. And so what happens when you find something and you're looking at the tags and then all of a sudden you see a particular tag and you think, score, it's some big brand. I found a blouse in California that was $15 and I just wanted to wear it on Halloween. And when I got home, I looked at the label and it originally sold for $600. So, like, don't you know, like, when you find something like that, you value it more because the brand that made it, right? Well, if each one of us had a tag, a tag that could show to others, it would say, made by God, handle with care. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, yes, God loves us. The creator of the universe has their imprint on us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God's imprint is in you. Say it with me. God's imprint is in me. God's imprint is in me. Claim it. Claim it. God created humanity in God's image. And through us, the world knows God because God can flow through us. God can flow through us. And that's when we see Christ in somebody, right? It's not because they're all puffed up and proud saying, I'm a Christian. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. What? Actions speak louder than words. It's because you see the love flowing out of a person, the understanding out of a person, compassion over judgment, right? 
you see these things and you think these things are unexplainable. I mean, in Rwanda, a program that I know after the genocide, um, the lady who runs the program told me that after the big genocide, they didn't have enough prisons to hold all the murderers. And so they had to find another way to deal with one another. It was not feasible to do it any other way. And Julianne told me that for three days, the murderers and the survivors sit with each other. Three days. That's some hard conversation. And then they are assigned work to do together. A plot of land to go and farm together. And you got to meet there every week, these days of the week and these times. And one lady took on the family of the murderer because she had lost her own to him. And she developed compassion for what they were going through. And compassion ex overran her judgment. It's so easy to be judgy, right? Snap judgments come to our minds throughout the day, right? Oh, yeah. But when we turn that judgment into compassion, we earnestly seek prayer for the other person. Knowing that God knows what that person needs to wake up, we need to wake up too. We offer it to God, and that's what changes us. I read a quote yesterday that said, God gave you a fingerprint that no one else has so that you can leave an imprint that no one else can. I'm going to say that again. God gave you a fingerprint that no one else has so that you can leave an imprint that no one else can. Each one of you are divine vessels. Each one of you. We are earthly vessels here for time and gone tomorrow. But while we are here, no matter how cracked, broken, and discarded we may feel, still God will work through us because we're, we are God's vessel. We will never be discarded by God. Those breaks and cracks in us, God just fills that with more light. God can use those things to shine even more radiantly. It's because sometimes, just as the scripture that Mary read said, it's because sometimes of our weaknesses that God's strength is made perfect. Because we learn to depend on God instead of thinking, well, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. Nobody else helped me do what I did today. Well, we can get all puffed up and proud, and all of us do it at times. But when we are, we are farthest away from the heart of God that we can give. It's when the humility comes out of our weaknesses that we actually say, okay, what I'm doing sucks. What I'm doing does not work. God, break me open. Fill me up. Use me. Use me. Do what you will with me. And then that, in that moment, things start to transform. And I'm sorry I said sucks. <laughs> it doesn't bother any of you. Um, yeah, so there's a difference between righteousness and self-righteousness. Amen? And this is something we've got to watch for in ourselves and others. And if others become self-righteous, we can also, as accountable partners in the faith, we can say, hey, remember, it's through God's grace that you're here. You know, so there's a difference between righteousness. What? Yeah, there is a difference between righteousness and self-righteousness. And as a Christian, a body of Christ, we hold one another accountable by simply saying out of compassion, remember who it is that brought you here and who's waking you up each morning. 
and who's guiding you and who has given you these blessings. Because we know that earthly blessings only last for a time. Things, we throw trash out today that one day long before we thought that was what we had to get. Now it's rusted and rotted. Those things go away. The thing that doesn't ever go away is our spirit and meeting God in that deep place. However we need to do it, if it is in nature, if it is sitting and looking at a tree whose leaves are gently blowing, if it is by sitting and closing your eyes and deep breathing, if it is listening to music that is soothing or upbeat, like I love black gospel, that's what gets me up in the morning, Alexa and that music. It's like I feel close. But each one of us are unique, and we all have that unique imprint and the way that God will get through to us through nature, through other human beings, through music, through art, through all of the beauty of the world. So the difference also between righteousness and self-righteousness is humility. And that's what we need to be near the heart of God. In another scripture for today, we think about the time when Jesus told a story about two people, a Pharisee, which, you know, a Jewish sect and considered in the community to be very righteous. Like they lived by strict codes of ethics and law and a tax collector and that was the other person in this story and the tax collector in that community sense was someone who was to be despised and he didn't follow God all he did was follow money and we got plenty of people worshiping worshiping at the banks on the, on Sunday because that's where their God is right I mean, that happens. Mm -hmm. So it's still in our world today. Like this, I'm not talking about an age-old story. I'm talking about this can be transferred here today too. But Jesus showed the difference between righteousness and self-righteousness in his story. He said this in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up by himself and he prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, and adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I've got. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Jesus said, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. So what if the miracles that we've been looking for externally are already here internally right within us? Is that a little scary? It's a little scary, like, to think about that. Oh, my goodness, what if it's like Dorothy and the slippers she had all along were right there and the power was within her? What if the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us has just been waiting for us to wake up? Wake up every day in us and move through us and do the miracles, the miracles that show God's love on earth, that testify to God's goodness, not through puffed up proud words, but just by, by being present with other people who are hurting, who are sick, who are mourning, 
who are losing everything that they own. What if this is the miracle that they've been waiting for and that we can give? Amen? Amen. The miracle of God living in and through us is the most blessed miracle of all. As St. Teresa of Avila said, humility is walking in the truth of who we are. Humility is walking in the truth of who we are. And that means warts and all. That we don't try to put on pretenses and act like everything is just fine. Because in those times, we don't find healing, right? You can't go to a doctor and say, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? And expect to get any healing from a doctor, right? And it's the same way with God. Admitting the baggage we carry, inviting Christ to work through our weaknesses, brings us nearer to the heart of God, the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this thought-provoking and uplifting sermon from Glencliff United Methodist Church. We hope that the message has resonated with you, inspiring you to live out your faith in meaningful ways. May we be agents of healing, justice, and reconciliation guided by the teachings of Jesus Christ. We invite you to connect with us further and explore the many opportunities for growth, fellowship, and service that our church offers. If you found today's sermon meaningful, share it with a friend or loved one who may benefit from these words of encouragement. If you'd like to support Glencliff United Methodist Church financially, visit glencliffumc.org slash donate. Until we meet again, remember, you are cherished and your presence in this world matters. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about that. You can simply choose how you'll respond to that love. Amen. Amen.